Hi everyone. It is December 3rd, 2018. I'm going to go through some articles that I have found on directed energy weapons that our military has. They've been developed. They're in use. I will be reading excerpts from these articles. I will link below to every article. But I want you to think California fires as I am reading these excerpts. Laser Apache. Uh, the manufacturer, Raytheon, they had a successful test zapping targets on the White Sands missile range. Now, I included in one of my videos a Raytheon video that is on YouTube. They show the test, this Apache helicopter with this laser mounted. They show everything but the destructive impact. So this test of their tactical high energy laser called HELL, after the test, they collected data, including the data of impact of vibration, dust, rotor, rotor downwash, dust. Air Force eyes, energy shields, microwave bombs. Yes, they can put up an energy shield around a city to protect it from any incoming missile. So when they do that, North Korea, the crazy guy is going to set off uh, a, a missile and, oh my God, these missiles. Now North Korea, they have the capability of reaching the United States, which is greatly disputed by the experts, but we have shields that we can protect. So all of what you hear on mainstream media is just to elicit your fear. And when you, when you have a population that's scared, you can easily manipulate them and you can get them to do whatever the hell you want them to do. But let's see the microwave bombs. Well, currently, meaning back in 2007, when this article was posted, they had these chemical powered lasers, which were problematic and the Air Force wanted to create electric powered lasers, which they did and they're in use. So they would mainly be engaging tactical air to ground targets and they may simply be used to start fires on the ground and other disruptive tasks. Marines request long-range blowtorch for Iraq to seek a psychological edge by roasting foes with lasers. Yes, there was an urgent operational need for an airborne tactical laser that could, in the words of the formal request, create instantaneous burst combustion of insurgent clothing, a rapid death through violent trauma, or more probably a morbid, morbid sorry, combination of both. This, 2007. This was back in 2003. So the chemical laser integrated on an AC-130 gunship. Uh, they were requesting this tactical laser, which could eventually be put on other aircraft such as drones or the Offspree um, helicopter. Such weapons, when used against people, can be compared to long-range blow torches or precision flame throwers. The lasers don't just kill people, but they kill people in a really gruesome, frightening way, particularly because the beam from such weapons, like the advanced tactical laser, is invisible to the human eye. That means you could have three guys standing around you and suddenly one of them suddenly bursts into flames. <sighs> yeah, I do believe, absolutely that 
these lasers are being used to start the fires, to take out the homes and the cars, and to kill an awful lot of people. And Paradise, California, the campfire, oh, they are keeping the numbers way down of those who died in a gruesome manner. This article, Take the Red Pill, um, very good. And it has a lot of information for those who do research, which you can work off of. Directed energy weapons on the battlefield, Iraq, California, and other locations. So the one thing that really leaped out for me was this article that took from this document, Directed Energy Weapons on the Battlefield, a new vision, a new vision for 2025. This is only 75 pages, and you can get an awful lot of information about the weapons that our military is using already. They don't have to wait till 2025. So what does this document say? It says the I'm sure yes here new vision for 2025 to destroy soft targets human flesh fabrics plastics you need only a certain amount of power extremely hard target targets sorry such as tanks might require more power so, a 25 kilowatt laser with a two second pulse length and a five centimeter spot size could kill a person, break an aircraft canopy, or ignite fabrics and materials at distances. Pulsed lasers can create a unique series of effects caused by the impact of the short duration high intensity pulses. The magnitude of these pulses can be impressive. For example, in 1995, a tabletop laser at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory had a pulsed output of 100 trillion watts. And there are people who are supposedly awake who say, we don't have lasers like this. We don't have lasers with the intensity, the power that they need to, to take out buildings? Okay, well they do. And it's unfortunate that they either are misleading people purposely or they just have not done the research and they're showing their ignorance. But while each pulse was extremely short, each pulse had a peak power output that was 20 times greater than the entire instantaneous electrical generation capacity of the United States of America. The beamlets from this laser, only 400 quadrillionths of a second in duration, act as powerful battering rams when projected against a structure or material. These pulses drive an ultra high pressure shock wave into the material that can cause material failure through fracturing at the atomic level. The magnitude of these shocks is extreme. The atomic level. That's why you see all of those homes more than 11,000 homes. I just recently heard that it's more than 13,000 buildings in one area of paradise and it took 24 hours to do it. Leveling to dust. Leveling to dust. 24 hours and people still are arguing over 
where the directed energy weapons were used. Like their continuous wave cousins, pulsed lasers have also increased exponentially in power over the per past 30 years. This paper posits that derivatives from the current level of technology in the laboratory will make it to the field in the next 20 years. Terawatt class devices may be flying on fighter like aircraft by 2020, 2030. Uh uh, they're doing it already. They're doing it already. And I just want to check to see if there was anything else I highlighted. I've highlighted more than you probably care to know. But yes, there are, there's a tremendous amount of information just here in this article. And I want to thank everybody for putting in the effort to bring this information to us. Military technology and the multi-domain battle plan. The range of weapon systems available for use by the U.S. military extends beyond bombs, missiles, anti-missile defenses. Over the last decade, the U.S. has been successful in developing entirely new weapon systems and defenses, which encompass hypersonic weapons, directed energy weapons, electromechanical pulses, and satellite weapons in space. So you can read about the hypersonic weapons. I want to go to the directed energy weapons right here. And yes, the 5G, 5G rollout is a rollout of a directed energy weapon that will be used against all of us. So, uh, directed energy weapons are mounted on ships, planes, jeeps, helicopters, and even individual soldiers. Our police have them. Our military have them. Portable, portable, directed energy weapons. The larger directed energy weapons operate in the terror watt range and are mounted on ships. However, with the development of modern solar energy, these new super weapons have been miniaturized. But a terawatt level electric discharge would be equivalent to hundreds of lightning strikes. So these directed energy weapons include microwave radiation emitters. Wow! Aren't they littered all over our country? They're called cell phone towers. They're called Gwen towers. Particle beam generators and lasers. Conventional weapons rely on chemical or kinetic energy. Kinetic meaning, oh, they fire a bullet, well, in the form of a projectile. Directed energy weapons rely on subatomic particles or electromagnetic waves that impact at or near the speed of light. Since the energy from directed energy weapons travel this fast and is line of sight, it arrives at the target almost instantly laser weapons. Highly classified development of a plasma rail gun. Now this also was written a while ago, but I, based on the article, the contents of the article, that's why I'm saying it, but I couldn't find a date on it. But these highly classified plasma rail guns, this is the electronic production of a directed beam of plasma instead of a projectile, a spheromac. The gun fires a succession of electronic plasma donuts at enormous speeds, which has an intense destructive effect on its target. And who is the most prominent advocate of these weapons? None other than Trump's national security advisor, McMaster. So here is Lockheed Martin's ground-based advanced test of the high energy asset Athena. And many of you have seen the Athena. Oh, this woman on Fox who is just so excited about the destruction that these weapons will bring. Athena, look at the burn, look at the hole. If you saw the video that I posted last night, 
on that PDF, the effects of directed energy weapons drilling a hole. There's your hole. But increase the power. And what happens? Diffuse the, um, the beam and increase the power. And you could have cars that look like this. But notice, this truck is white and the paint is fine. So you direct that beam at a certain level uh, a power density and you'll get a hole. But notice how the paint is off, coming off the hood. But the paint here is absolutely fine. On the door, it's fine. That is the effect of a directed energy weapon at a particular power. Increase the power. And that paint is going to come off cars. And we've seen it time and time again. Right? Paint off the car. Off truck, sorry. We know it, we're living it, we're seeing it, and I don't know about all of you. I do know about some of you. The feeling of just being sick to your stomach and all of the suffering that is taking place now seems to be just something that one has to deal with. Is the United States firing off electricity bombs in Syria? Yes. So, a woman, I think a woman, Janan Musa, I'm sorry if I have pronounced her name wrong, uh, in 2017 she tweeted that the members of the U.S. supported Syrian Democratic Forces told her American warplanes sometimes dropped an electricity bomb. They called it an electricity bomb because they didn't know what it was what the real name was but when the plane dropped electricity bombs anybody who had metal would burn so the metal was conductive of that electricity this woman worked for Arabic Al-Anon TV an Arabic language satellite television network headquartered in the United Arab Emirates. So, when another tweet, when plane wants to drop electricity bomb, we are told to drop anything metal that we carry. Otherwise, we would burn like ISIS fighters. The idea that a bomb would cause metal objects to become so hot as to burn anyone carrying them or any similar effect sounds like an easy rep recipe for a civilian casualty nightmare with the potential for innocent people to get burned at their dinner table while holding a fork. What if the weapon was actually focused, a focused microwave beam, highly localized electromagnetic pulse munition? No doubt it was. Blackout bombs. In 1991, the U.S. Navy used Warhead. It had developed for the Tomahawk cruise missile to black out power supplies over much of Iraq, the first war. They dropped these um, blackout bombs on Serbia during NATO's military action over Kosovo in 1999. They act like a light switch. 70% of Yugoslavia went dark. We can turn the power off wherever we need to and whenever we want to. Sprinkle highly conductive strands of carbon fiber and it acts as a light switch. Oh, and this could be used again in Iraq in 2003? It was. And 
they have the technology to bring your car to a dead halt. Oh, the tires will roll. But you can't operate that car anymore. And I have to also wonder if that was taking place in paradise as people were trying to escape. You see all these cars just littering streets. Many just it looks like well one could imagine there was so much smoke they couldn't see and a bus just just goes off the road. But we see countless cars all over on the sides of roads and I do wonder if they suddenly lost power in their cars. Mainstream media reports it as they jumping out of their cars to run from the fire. Why are most of the cars that we see, the doors are closed? Do you think if you're escaping a fire and you're in a car and you want to run out of that car, you're going to be thinking about closing the door. I do believe a lot of people were murdered. Murdered. A lot more than we are hearing. And it is murder. It is so murder. You're escaping a fire. You got to get out of that car to hightail it on foot so you pull your car off the side of the road to do that how did this person get out of this truck because he's, he's up against an embankment yes all of this is very very upsetting I will link below to all of this I hope you guys are okay. I sure wish Americans would begin to just open their minds to consider consider what so many of us have been trying to get through to them for years. If they don't, Jerry Brown is absolutely right when he says things are going to get worse you're going to have more fires. So think about it, you guys in California. Your enemy happens to be the people who who decide to not listen to you, to um, remain comfortable in their willful ignorance.